The final chapter of this year's Tour Down Under took the race right into the heart of Adelaide with a technical 4.5 km circuit which the riders would tackle 20 times. After yesterday's decisive stage, it would take a truly bizarre situation to stop Richie Port from winning his first Tour Down Under title, but today was far from a dead rubber, with several items of unfinished business. Two intermediate sprints available at the end of laps 8 and 12, as well as a handful of King of the Mountains points on the 10th and 15th time up the short but punchy Montefiore Hill. The three second time bonuses available at those intermediate sprints would be of great interest to some of the GC leaders, and an early move featuring Thomas de Ghent and Gianluca Brambilla was reeled in at the start of an all-important eighth lap. Bora Hansgrohe were pulling out all the stops to help Jay McCarthy, who was sitting just three seconds off a podium spot in fourth. McCarthy had the luxury of counting on a lead out from world champion Peter Sagan and held off Caleb Ewan for those three crucial bonus seconds, enough to leapfrog him above Nathan Haas into the GC podium in the process. Lotto Sudal countered once again with de Ghent, who was finally able to pick up three King of the Mountains points on lap 10 to secure his overall lead in that competition. Two laps later and best young rider in the race Jonathan Restrepo earned three bonus seconds and jumped from 12 to 10 in the overall standings with this sprint before dropping back, leaving five riders at the head of the race, which included the familiar face of Jack Bauer, who was in the process of earning the award for the most aggressive rider for the third day in a row. But not even Bauer could spoil the sprinter's day, he was caught on circuit 19 of 20. Just enough time then to get ready for one more bunch gallop. Peter Sagan, now taking on the role of lead sprinter, was being led out by Rudy Selig. However, Ewan had managed to hijack his sprint train and was on the German's wheel. When Selig drifted aside, it was all about pure power in the drag to the line. Sagan shadowed, but he couldn't catch the Aussie as he celebrated a quartet of wins in a week that exceeded even his lofty expectations. And I can't really believe it. You know, coming into this this tour, I actually yeah, joked with my girlfriend that I'd win four stages and. And yeah, really, I can't believe I have with the, the calibre of sprinters here, you know, it was always going to be hard beating Peter Sagan, even if he's not in his best form, you know, he's still the best rider in the world at the moment. So uh, yeah, you know, I'm just so happy with the, the performance I've had. Richie Port rolled home safely in 48th, clinching his first Tour Down Under title in the process. A great start to the year and a chance to put the disappointments of 2016 well and truly behind him. Yeah, I mean, after crashing in Rio and, uh, you know, injuring myself quite nasty in a nasty crash, uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't too hard to be motivated for this race. Um, you know, I had a good break at, uh, at the end of last season. I've come back refreshed physically and mentally. And, uh, you know, to, to win this race, it means a hell of a lot. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a credit to this race, just how big it is. Here's one more look at the final general classification. Jay McCarthy used some guile and determination to wrestle a final spot on the podium from Nathan Haas, while Jonathan Restrepo also jumps up a couple of places thanks to time bonuses earned today. Caleb Ewan took the points classification in addition to his four stage wins, capping an incredible week for him. Thomas de Ghent fought harder than most to earn his King of the Mountains jersey. Jonathan Restrepo was the best young rider after an impressive display on Willunga Hill and the UniSA team, the only wildcard team in the race, duly delivered on their target of winning the team's classification. So there you have it, the first World Tour race of the season in the books. Can Richie Port and Caleb Ewan build on their early season form for Grand Tour glory later in the year? Leave us a comment below for your thoughts on this year's Tour Down Under. We hope to bring you more race reports very soon, so subscribe to GCN to ensure you don't miss them. If you want to catch up on any of the action from this week, there's a link to our Tour Down Under playlist. Every single stage in one place. And our most recent pro bike is here too, Alberto Contador's brand new Trek Speed Concept time trial bike.